The answer to the question, what makes a good commute scooter is very simple, which is it needs to move you safely every day. And that's it. My name is Nick and many movers are my thing. Subscribe for regular content. And yes, it is that simple. A good commuter scooter needs to move you safely every day. That's range, speed, safety, and durability. But obviously actually fulfilling those three criteria is easier said than done. I'd like to go over the things that I look for when considering a scooter that I want to use as a daily driver. Not only that, I am going to apply those standards to this scooter, the VX2 Pro from VMAX. It's a Swiss company that has established themselves as a quality maker of electric scooters in the European market and has now crossed the Atlantic to take a swing at the usual suspects. Spoiler alert, it passes the test and full disclosure, the scooter was sent to me on loan from VMAX and I will receive a commission from the affiliate link below. However, I will be objective in my comments warts and all. And the first maybe obvious thing a good commute scoot needs to do is get you to where you're going, which is to say it needs power and it needs range. Both are subject to one situation and I have a relatively short commute, so I'll use the average in Canada, which ranges from 16 to 24 kilometers, but let's go high at 24. And as for power, it needs to pass the hill test, which for me is the steepest hill in Vancouver. If you can get up that, it can get up anything. The VX2 Pro has a tested range of 44 kilometers accomplished with a 220 pound load in sport mode, pushing it to the max. And I suspect someone lighter than myself in the very usable eco mode could easily get close to the stated 60 kilometer range. Even other variations with smaller batteries would manage. The smallest battery with a stated 35 kilometer range would in theory take you over 25 kilometers running at full tilt. The scooter is equipped with a respectable 500 watt motor capable of a top speed of 30 kilometers per hour and an impressive maximum load of 287 pounds. It does the trick for the most part, it just passed the hill test. That being said, it smashed every other hill I took it on without a sweat. Next is safety, which encompasses a few key features. First is visibility, which comes in the form of reflectors and capable lighting. Front light, rear light, and reflectors are the basics. And there are reflectors on either side of the front wheel and under the front light. The front facing light is more than capable of lighting the way and the rear light is bright and has two stages to signal braking. And along with lighting, there should be turn signals because it is generally not recommended to hand signal on an e-scooter. Thankfully, signals are present on both the back of the deck and the end of the handlebars, which are controlled by the rocker switch on the left side of the cockpit. Now it's fun to go fast, but it's an even better thing to be able to stop and good brakes are a must, which in my opinion are ones that from top speed, you can mash without warning and come to a stop safely. I am really impressed with the stopping power of the VX2 with both the 500 watt regen brake and the front drum brake. It gets the job done. The right lever controls the rear regen brake and the left will engage both the regen and front drum brake, which is not going to be as good as disc brakes, but the benefit of low maintenance, easy adjustability and the reduced risk of lockup are well worth the trade-off. Last, something you should never ever skimp on is the battery. Seeing cases of battery fires on the rise is not something that should be taken lightly, not only for the bad press it gives PEVs, but more importantly, for your own safety. And every good scooter, e-bike, EUC, whatever, has a UL rated battery. And it's great to know that every VX2 battery is UL certified. Oh, and of course, you need a bell. And the last category that is essential for a good commuter is durability. The thing needs to be able to take a beating day in and day out. Now I want to start with something that if it isn't present is a 100% non-starter for me. And that is water resistance. Rain should never be the reason you can't get going. And I don't look for a specific IP rating, but rather can it handle rain like fully rainy, wet roads. And the best way to find that out is to check Reddit, YouTube, or comments on review pages for evidence of water damage. Now, since the scooter is new to North America, most of the sources I typically investigate turn up in German. So from what I painstakingly translated, no evidence of water damage was found. The VX2 Pro has an IPX6 rating, which is higher than the vast majority of scooters. And you may have noticed that the scooter has been wet in many of the shots I took, and that was no accident. I took it out in the rain, brought it in, and I may have kept a water bottle handy to keep it dripping to highlight its rainworthiness. So over the past 10 days, all but two of those days were rainy. This thing has thus far passed the test. That doesn't mean it's waterproof, but I would definitely call it weather sealed. It shares the same IP rating as my daily driver, the Apollo City Pro, which is still going strong after nearly 3000 kilometers of riding, a lot of that in the rain. So I'd feel confident in continuing to use the VX2 Pro no matter the weather conditions. And next, is it rugged, like solid? Can it take a beating? Much like the water resistance rating, the proof is usually in the community. 
So VMAX's mission is it's time for equality. And as far as my searches have found, there were no reports of poor quality. And to be honest, I'm not surprised. This thing feels incredibly well built and comes with a lengthy 24 month warranty for peace of mind. And while warranties are nice, something important is repairability. Can parts be sourced? VMAX does sell some parts on their website, but it only covers the basics. And it's not a deal breaker, but I would always like to see more availability of parts. So that covers what makes a good commuter, at least in my books. It gets you to where you need to go and it does it safely and it does it reliably. And I think the scooter has passed. It would make a great commuter. That's all you want to know. Please leave a like and have a great day. I'm going to go over the rest of the features, but first I want to ask a casual what they thought. And that casual is my wife. She often rides a nine bot max to work, but she took that trip four times in the last week on the VX2 Pro. And I think her opinion will be valuable. Okay, so the old one's the nine bot max, the new one's the VX2 Pro. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> you've had four days with VX2 Pro. Yes. What do you like about the scooter? I really like the turn signal. It makes me feel very safe. It's easy to use. Um, instead of just using my hand and feeling super wobbly. Um, I like the brakes, especially when it rains here in Vancouver, which it does often. Uh, I feel like I feel in control. It stops right away and I don't feel like I'm slipping around. The battery life is really good. I feel like we don't have to charge it very often, which is awesome. And it does feel like a bit smoother of a ride. Not as smooth as your one with Bounce suspension. suspension. <laughs> I was gonna say bouncy stuff, but <laughs> suspension. Um, but better than the other one. Okay. Yeah. So is there anything you didn't like about it? Um, what I didn't like about it is I feel like I don't have a clear understanding of when it's on cruise control. It makes I think there's a beep, but, but I don't always hear it. It's not as clear as the other one. The other one I know I'm on cruise control and I'm like good, I can take my hand off. <laughs> there's quite an acceleration, which I I've gotten a bit used to, but at first I felt like I was about to like pop a wheelie. I would like go and I'd almost throw myself. So that I didn't love, but I got used to. So it's not a complete turn off. So would you rather have this one, the VX2 Pro, or would you rather have the 9mm Max? I would say I'd rather have this one, but I'd have to get used to it. Well, there we go, from casual. Lastly, going over the other features of the scooter and some things that I think could use some improvements. Starting with the screen. Some said it wasn't very visible in bright sunlight, though it wasn't an issue for me. It displays the battery level, speed, gear, lights, Bluetooth, cruise control, signals, and odometer. And controlling the scooter is simple. Turn on with a long press of the power button. One press for gear change from eco to sport. And again, the eco mode is great. I sometimes forget I was in eco mode, and I would say it's equivalent to the sport mode of the 9Bot Max. Three presses activates cruise control, which will engage after maintaining a constant speed for five seconds. Press four times to toggle kickstart or zero start, and press five times to change the max speed. Mode one is 25 kph, and two is 30 kph. The grips are decent, they're perfectly fine, but I feel like they could be a bit wider apart. There is no suspension, but that is pretty standard for a scooter in this size. And the kickstand is metal and solid, and I had no issues with it. The deck is slightly smaller in width and length than the 9Bot Max, however, it seemed adequate even for my size 12 shoes. The fenders have provided exceptional coverage. I did not have any spray on my legs that I could notice. This isn't my thing, but it is app enabled, which features most basic functions that are available in the cockpit with some extra information. And as for charge time, they claim 8.5 hours, but in my test, it took about 6.5 hours, which is still on the slow side, but it's not something I worry about. On the upside, the slow charge speed will be less stressful on the battery and should lead to a longer lifespan. Also the quick locking mechanism, easy to fold down, easy to fold back up and makes it very easy to carry. And that's the scooter, but there are a few things that I need to nitpick. Turn signals on the handlebars could be a bit more visible, but I suspect those rubber covers will help when you inevitably drop the scooter. There's no continuous beep when the indicator is on. I constantly left the indicator on, not realizing it. So I would like more than a single beep. 3-Gen brake, while excellent, can be a bit too strong and feels like, at least feels like, if you pull the brake too hard, it can lock up, but I'm not sure if that's actually what's happening. And the charge port both feels insubstantial and does not close automatically. Rather, it's held in simply by friction. And the max speed, this is a small point. I think the top speed could be a bit higher to separate itself from its competitors. That 500 watt motor has more to give. You can feel it when you ride this thing. Even an unlock to 35 kph would be plenty for those who feel they can handle it. 
But that's honestly it for Mark's against, in my view. I think this scooter is for anyone who wants a relatively portable scooter, but needs more power than found on similar scoots. If you weigh over 220 pounds, or even not, if you have a lot of hills on your rides, this thing will get the job done, leaving 350 watt motors in the dust. Overall, this is a fantastic scooter. I am very impressed with the rugged quality, stable ride, and power. And to put it simply, it's a beefed up 9Bot Max. It rides like a 9Bot Max, but with more power, more features, and more range. If you're interested in one, use the link below or the coupon code Nick the Door to get 100 off or an extra 10 if there's already a sale. Anyway, my name is Nick. Thanks for watching.